So, hello. So my name is Hans Reitz. I'm uh, born in Germany, in Bavaria, in a family with seven child. My mother was a single mother, and uh, this was quite a challenge at the 70s. So many times when I was grown up, I saw my mother crying in the evening, don't know how feeds the seven children next day or over next day. So this teach me my whole life. Every time when I open the river and see something to eat, to be happy to have something. So with 20 years, I saw the movie uh, Mahatma Gandhi, beautiful movie, highly inspiring. I never went out of these villages where I was born. I never went out of these languages. So, and I was so touched about the way how to fight without violence about injustice, about something that you don't accept. So, very generously, I asked my mother if I can go to India. And she told me yes. So it took me a while collecting the money, and then I started hitchhiking to India from Bavaria, age of 20, don't speak English at this time, crossed Turkey, spent a couple of months in Iraq, spending in Kuwait, going up, uh, visiting shortly Saudi Arabia, going with the boat to Karachi, landing to Pakistan, crossing the border in uh, 89, uh, no, 89, yes, to Afghanistan, coming to India, was seven years on the road, getting teached in India about South Indian classical music, living in a very simple life, and getting enjoyed in all these rituals, and all the habits and all the cultural backgrounds. After seven years, I feel an enormous joy of life in myself, and I was thinking I have to go back where I was born, in, where I was born, and where I get everything received, and give something back to my own place. So I come back, and very funny today because I have I meet so many people on the road. So <laughs> I become a talent scout for Cirque du Soleil. I didn't know that they're here today, so it's fun. So I had all the addresses, all the books, all the stuff, so, and I was fascinated by the modern way of circus. So afterwards, I opened some different business, more to can do what I want to do, never to make money. The business was always getting a license to operate. By good luck, the right people, the right team, the right person around me, I opened around 12, 13 companies, everyone very successful, become a very successful director. One of my event company, was uh, voted a couple of years later to the most creative agency in Germany. So it was the only, Ger only agency ever who was ranking number one place in all creative ranking. It was pronounced as the most um, awarded uh, creative agency in the States, and we never worked in the United States. So quite lucky, successful, with the right people, with the right stuff, making millions of euros, turning around millions of euros, Never the object was to making money, it was just to have this license to operate. So, and with this I come in contact with a, a lot of people who was very privileged. At the end, we're all privileged in this room. So, in doing all these nice, big, fancy events, presenting David Beckham's icon and all this stuff, and also meet people who was working on the side, like Doctors Without Borders, I meet the Dalai Lama, Al Gore, in 2007, I meet Professor Yunus, the man from Bangladesh, this beautiful economist who invented this microcredit. I was so touched with this man that I would make a break, and I still remember on the time when I was traveling to India, so so many people suffering, and I was thinking, hey, I can use my creativity to a total different purpose. So I went to Bangladesh, and somehow I get good friendship with Professor Yunus, and I get very closely. He, uh, pronounced me to his creative advisor after six months. I stopped my work and I turned everything what I can do into this kind of what he calls social business. It was a beautiful experience uh, to see you can do something with your skill, you can do something with your creativity, you can make you, you, can make you useful for something else. So and we was walking and we was traveling around the world and talking about the idea of social business. And what's social business all about? It's easy. We have seven principles in social business. So let's see uh, on an example like the Cirque du Soleil. One principle is, first, it's your social object. So as I just was imagining in my mind, if you create a Cirque of Dignity, 
you know, and we try to see the young girls in Haiti, the women in Sudan, the dignity for the, for the children who suffer under cocaine dealers in Colombia, getting uh, some people from Afghanistan, and create an identity, a new kind of identity for the next generation, like for this beautiful girl behind me. So this is our object to say, yes, we do something, then they have another image, another, imi another identity. Number two of the principles, we invest the money, we're setting it up without being dedicated to donations or have collecting money. So we're setting up as a business. Number three is, if Cirque du Soleil will be our partner, for example, as a Grameen Cirque du Soleil, they get back some money. They invest 10 million, we do the best show ever in the world, and Cirque du Soleil, as they know how to do it, say, okay, 10 million is enough, I invest and I get 10 million back. So no dividend. I don't lose, and I have no dividend. If we are very successful, like Cirque du Soleil, and we go around the world, we collect more money. The money stays in the company. Of course, you make profit, and you teach young, young girls around the world about the music, about the art, about the stuff. So the profit stays in the company. We do it very, very um, environmental friendly. This is principle number five. So maybe this is the first show of Cirque du Soleil who is done pure by... Uh, Solar age, or sun age, or sun power, renewable energy. Maybe the costumes is done at the first time from cradle to cradle. So we have a very intelligent, joyful way to be very creative. It doesn't matter if you work in Cirque du Soleil or if you work in the social business Cirque du Soleil. As an artist, you get the same money. As a manager, you get the same money like in the normal business. So all the people who are inside the company uh, works and get money like the others. And seven, this is very easy to imagine, the seventh principle is do it with joy. We do it every day to go out and to spare and to share our joy. So, and if you can see it on this example, and if you can imagine then which problem we have, and we can imagine how many people uh, feel hungry today. You know, we still today 27,500 people dying out of hunger. We have a billion, one billion, two hundred million people who are suffering of hunger today. We have two billion people who is afraid what they eat to, to, tomorrow. And, just from my, spe my speaker before, we have another one billion people who have not an access to the toilet. That means 500 million women, all women, 500 million women who doesn't know where to go in the evening. Every night afraid, every night sitting like this and don't know where to go to pee. And now imagine if we use all our creativity, all our effort, and we believe, there is no doubt in this room, and there is no doubt anywhere, if you want to imagine to come to the Mars, then we will reach the Mars. Just a question of time, a question of commitment. The same commitment is, if we say we have to do the commitment, not a single child, not a single child anymore have to die out of hunger. It's possible. I think we should go for the possible. I don't know when it's possible. I don't know where, but I believe in it. And at least myself and a lot of other people what I meet around the world make a commitment. Every day we stand up and we try to go for the impossible. It's definitely clear we can do it. Thank you very much.